sixth video in slit lamp examination in which we are going to show you an interesting case of keratoconus in which the surface of the cornea is conical along with the topographic evaluation of that patient. Let's look at this uh, slit lamp examination picture and what we want to see in this patient I'll show you you want to go through the slit lamp examination going from one side to the other side and you're checking the depth of the anterior chamber and the contour of the cornea. Now you can see I'm doing diffuse illumination. The things which you want to see is any Vogue stride to be seen, any flesh ring which I'm trying to visualize at this point. And let's do this examination on this slit lamp and make a slit and then look at the profile I'm looking at the see any flesh ring but the other thing which we want to see is you want to see if this is the contour of the front then this is the back so in keratoconus this contour becomes more sort of a conical so this is the difference which you want to see in patients with keratoconus on this the other findings which you want to see or which you will see in these patients is uh, let go on this things which you will see the things which you see at the center are flesh ring or in the pericentral area in this area you'll see a flesh ring and typically you will see a flesh ring in this area and it is usually visible if you see over here this area might be that but usually the other thing which you want to see is you can use a red free filter that usually gives uh, shows it much better other things which are visible are vogue stride over here they're vertical fine stride lines then they'll if you want to see thinning at the very center so if this is the cornea it will be become very thin over here like this so it's it'll be very thin in the center in this area so those are the things which we want to see on slit lamp examination and do not want to miss out the other things which you will do on uh, scissoring you will see on retinoscopy and the oil droplet sign you can see on the uh, direct ophthalmoscopy. But this patient did not have extreme thinning of the central cornea which will confirm on topography and we'll see on pachymetry as well. And at the end what you want, uh, other thing which happens is when you get high drops there is a fluid going through the cone into the stroma of the cornea it's very painful and that leads to scarring. The cup to disc ratio is normal in this patient of 0.3. You need to evert the co the lid to see if there's any giant papillary conjunctivitis because UG keratoconus is associated with GPC. Let's go down now to the external examination. Here you want to see a Munson sign. So this is conical shape of the cornea. So it seems to be the cone is more present on the right side compared to the left side. What you are trying to do is you're basically when you ask the patient to look down, you're forcing the cornea to go and press on the eyelids from behind and the eyelids actually take the shape of the cornea and that is the corneal co apical shape of the cornea, the conical shape of the cornea which you see on the lid and that is called a Munson sign which is positive in this patient. Now let's look at the corneal topography of this patient on the right side. The first thing you want to see a K-max. K-max more than 48 is probably more suggestive of keratoconus. It is 51.7 in this patient. The ne next thing you want to see the, the pachymetry of the cornea at the thinnest location. So this is 442. So we are looking at 550 is the normal. So it's pretty low in this. The other thing which you want to see is how much it is displaced from in the x-axis and the y-axis so it's minus 0.49 and, and, and 0.35 so that actually tells you how much it has gone this way and this way downwards so apex of the cone is over here. So let's see the thinnest point of the cornea is shown by this circle so this circle you need to localize on this circle and that will tell us if the thinner, where the thinnest point of the cornea is. So it is over here. You can see this circle over here and this circle over here, over here. Here is slightly difficult, but here you can see the thinnest point of the cornea. 
The other, the next thing you want to see is what is the astigmatism on this patient. So this is 3.4. So there is higher range astigmatism. Then you move on to the surface, the, the Q value that is minus 0 0.86 in this patient. Then the surface of the cornea, you see the sagittal curvature map. So this is the red area. The red area tells you that the surface is elevated than normal. And here you see the area of redness. You see this is an island which you see over here. The yellowish and the red is an island. The, the red is in the center and the yellow is surrounding it. And surrounding that area, you're actually seeing an area of or green. So what you're seeing is the conical cornea going up like this in the center. So this is the green area which you're seeing and this is the tip of the cone which you're seeing over here is this area. So this is the cornea as you're seeing over here. And the other important map which they say is more useful than the axial elevation map is the front and the back elevation because corneal topography you can differentiate between if the cone is centered anterior or posterior and usually the anterior curvature or the anterior elevation changes come later and usually people are diagnosed with posterior cones and those are more sort of uh, uh, if they're not diagnosed earlier then they can be problematic especially in refractive surgery. So if we look at this area what does elevation map do is this is the same cone over here what we do is we have a reference sphere a best fit sphere and what we do is place a best fit sphere and you calculate the difference of the height of this cone from the best fit sphere in the center this is this area over here and this is the difference of the best fit sphere from the back so usually the cone will go backward and this is the area which is highlighted in blue what you see. So you place a best, best fit sphere and then you do that for the anterior elevation and similarly for the posterior elevation. Values more than probably 7.7 .7 in myopes and more than 6.5 in hypermitropes tell you a value of plus 14 is definitely showing that the patient has keratoconus. Similarly, the back values are slightly more. They are about 17 for myopes and 24, 27 for hypermetropes. So there's definitely 33 over here. So that's high values. High values at the periphery might not have that much of a significance, but usually the central values have more of a difference. The third thing or the last thing which you want to see is the pachymetry. The pachymetry will be slightly equal to the same thing which you have in the axial here you see the pachymetry is 446 and the thinning is more at the cone so this does not have a very extreme thinning of 350 or or those numbers usually if you want to do patients with the uh, corneal cross linkage you're looking for pachymetry above 400 for microns so that is the main gist of how you would read a quick reading of the corneal topography if you're reading on a Galilea Galilee display you will have that KPI keratoconus um, index now let's go on to the Balin Ambrosio enhanced display so that makes is B A D B Balin B A is B A is this enhanced dysplasia Ambrosio, B, A, and D is a D value which they've calculated for that. So what's the difference between this? So what is the difference in a Balian Ambrosio enhanced ectasia is if I'll just draw a best fit sphere over here and this is the elevation with normally a cone will come up and it'll go out from this thing like this. So this is the best fit sphere and this is the display which you're getting over here. So what you're doing in this, this is just showing the front elevation as you saw in the previous or the normal elevation map. These are the same values. So what you do in the second display is you exclude the central three millimeter of the thinnest cornea. So if this is the thinnest area of the cornea, this will be excluded and the reference of this display will come downward. So this will 
actually be where you want to measure where the height maximum height will be so you exclude this central area and you come up this and this is the difference between the two and that tells you if these are in red that tells you that the patient has got a keratoconus so basically this enhanced ectasia will show that this value from the reference plane from the normal cornea is is over here so what it is doing is if you stake this keratoconic cornea if the reference display is coming in from this area or ectatic area it is going to bring it down more to a level where a normal cornea will be so it will bring the reference plane down to the reference plane if it is it is here it will bring it the reference plane which will brought down more and that will produce show you the ectasia more prominently but it won't change the peripheral area it is just the central three and a half millimeter that is excluded the best fit sphere is usually done on a eight millimeter of the area of the cornea the other parameters which are useful in this are the corneal thickness spatial profile here you see this graph is very interestingly made that starts from a lower value of 400 microns of pachymetry and goes on to the periphery of eight millimeters it it, it becomes thin, thicker so normally the cornea is thinner in the center it becomes thicker so if a patient's profile is in this normal range that is normal but here you can see this percentage thickness profile is going moving from the top and it is going towards the lower part so it is going more towards abnormal then you look at the d values d is usually showing you two standard deviations above the mean of the front elevation and the back elevation this is f is the front and b is the back so more than if the value is more than two then or 2.3 or 4 it is showing that the value is abnormal that this is front this is back this is pachymetry this is the the, the displacement over here the e is the displacement from the side and then what you, is more important is the D value, the composite D value, if it is more than 2 or 2.5, that shows you abnormal. And this is a very specific uh, display showing that this patient has got keratoconus. So this is what you see in patients' eye on the right. Similarly, let's go and see the values on the left. Now, if you know stuff, we'll go quickly. The K value is 58, is high. The carrier pachymetry is 433, which is low. The astigmatism even higher on this side. So disease is more on this side. Elevation map, you see a central cone over here. There's an island, the yellow and red island, surrounded by green. And then you go on to front elevation. The front elevation shows you that the elevation is more than 7. So it's 18 and 25 in the center. The back elevation in the center is more than, this is a slightly myopic patient, so it's more than, uh, 17 so it's plus 39 so this is definitely showing keratoconus and going on the pachymetry is 442 and it is, this is the thinnest location and the thinnest location is moved slightly downwards and usually it moves temporarily in these patients with keratoconus and then we go on back to the same thing of Balin Ambrosia enhanced dysplasia here you can see the values uh, this is the normal elevation, the front and the back. This is the enhanced display with the exclusion of the central three millimeters. And you see that on the back, there's more significant conical shaped cornea than on the front surface. And then the values you will see is plus 14 difference and plus 35 difference on the side. The other thing, the other patient has a value, other eye had a value, D value of six something, but this has got a D value of 7.81. And you can see the pecky progression index going in from 400 micron to going down to 600, going thickness increasing up to 600 microns in the periphery. But here the percentage increase thickness is going out of range and that definitely shows you that this patient has got uh, keratoconus.